Okay, welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're staying with that story on this week's discovery in Focados of an illegal facility that has been used to siphon Nigeria's oil into sea-going vessels, which may have offered a rare glimpse into just how much oil theft has done to damage the country's economy. The latest discovery, according to reports, has been in operation for nine years. But word in the street has it that this grand act of economic sabotage extends far beyond nine years and might indeed have been known for close to 40 years. To have a discussion about this, we are now being joined by Alex Ney, a petroleum engineer with 46 years experience in the oil and gas industry, locally and internationally. Alex has, Alex has spoken about a, a scene from inside a low-flying helicopter in 1983, four similar facilities safely latched onto the pipeline, apparently for illegal extraction and export of Nigeria's crude. Was it reported? And how true is the continuing insinuation that a sophisticated operation like that will simply not be possible without collusion of sort by unscrupulous elements within the decision-making machinery of the oil and gas industry? Good morning, Mr. Naim. Good morning. Good morning, Good sir. Good day to everybody. Good morning. Good to have you join us this beautiful Sunday morning. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's start with uh, the discovery uh, just last week, you know, uh, at the Focados facility. Uh, what do you make of this? I know that you are very vast uh, in this sector, in this particular industry. Uh, is this, does this come to you as Tom Polo and his boys justifying their pay? Or does this, you know, uh, actually outline for Nigerians uh, the extent of the oil theft issue uh, that this sector is witnessing? And secondly, if you'd like to add that together, how will the federal government know that this particular discovery has been on for nine years when no arrest has been made and nobody has been declared wanted yet? What would be your thoughts on those, sir? Yes, when I heard about uh, this incident, it wasn't a shock to me because uh, way back 1983, based on my operation, I discovered a lot of this scrap going on, but uh, like any other person walking, you can only talk, you know, you have your limitations. But even on, even on national television, I said it, because I came back 79, 83, I found the first set, just flying from Escravos, go to Madao, follow the pipeline all the way to refinery. And I found all these things. It's, uh, it's amazing that people are just seeing this and alien and all that. First and foremost, who determines this nine years ago this happened? That's just bull crap. People shouldn't be talking like that. How do you determine nine years ago this has, what has been happening? These are just fake talks. These are serious things. If you look at the connection, you can see this is not done by just straight people. And I've said it over and over. Don't go to the Niger Delta and be talking about the boys in the village or this and that. This is a, a cartel. First and foremost, Shell or whoever is operating there has no reason to claim that they don't know this exists. Because the type of fabrication and things you see in there, these are things done by professional people. And you fly that area regularly. It's not an area that is isolated. To get to that area, I know where it is. You go through a helicopter, people fly around. And like I said, this whole oil theft in this country is a syndicate. For you to go on that pipe, somebody must know that there is no crude moving in that pipe, no pumping going on for them to go on it. Because if the pumping is on, you cannot go and do that type of operation. So somebody will tell somebody, this trunk line, there's no pumping out as of this time. So you go in there and tap, you prepare all your uh, 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 fittings. So this is not a joke. And let us not deceive ourselves by saying nine years ago or this or that. There is no evidence to show it's nine years ago. So let us not come up with a number. Otherwise, you make most of us feel as if we are idiots. So the fact remains that this whole operation in the Niger Delta has been on for a very long time. 
And I can recall in 1983, I saw it firsthand in an helicopter flying along the line all the way to worry, and I felt consigned. But anytime I appear on television to discuss this thing, it's like nothing has happened. We should be ashamed of ourselves. Government spent a lot of money on sending some of us to school. I didn't pay one cobble to go to school all through. Best degree, must everything. And I've been working as a petroleum engineer from day one till now, and I'm still consulting. Let us be sincere with ourselves. First and foremost, this has been there for a long time. How come suddenly? The people using these lines, they know where the lines are. They know where the lines are. So if you're giving anything like that, people should think a little bit. So first, the Nigerian Armed Forces, called the Navy, the Army, Nobody will claim not to know that this is going on. Shell people cannot claim not to know what's going on because the proximity to their facility is very clear. And to lay that type of line and do this type of job, there is no way somebody will not know. Even via satellite, we know all the basic lines that exist. With all the lines that exist in this country, people should know where they are. Now, this particular line is too major for somebody to say they didn't know. So it's an inside job. First, some staff they are involved, call it NNPC, call it Shell, call it the Navy, all of us to own up. It is a deal. Selling of the crude, I've gone out way back in 1983, flying the helicopter, got to the BOP, went to the tankers, and you can see a lot of tankers lined up, offshore air scrubbers there. What are they there for? Because the number of tankers I saw then, they can't be there just to load from Escravos Terminal or from Fukadu's Terminal. And I could see big loaded barges almost submerged being pulled by tugboats into the ocean then. I saw, in some question, I see somebody claiming. So what are we talking about? So we have to have some conscience. And that's why in 2007, when they were going to mention me as a group md or whatever people were scared because i don't have time for this crap the amount god has given to us can only take a certain amount of food beyond that the rest will spill nigerians should wake up and the government should be sincere with the people all these things happening if we want to get to the root of it we see it people know so why are we why are we playing games this is just gameplay you have that there. There are several other places. Then the small, small lines from the warheads. I did consulting for corn oil, and I have to visit to Bodo Field. You get there, you know the things they are doing. There is not something made for just a roadside person. Because for you to produce a well that has a cap valve down the hole with a bull plug, there are processes. And when I got there and I saw what I saw, that I knew. There are professionals involved. They gun boat everything cruise around that area. There's none of this operation going on where you don't have security men surveying and seeing things. It's just a compromise. It's a big syndicate. And to break this syndicate, it is going to be real, real rough. Now we have the uh, a chief of general staff, every person going out there. What is going to be the investigation? What is going to be the follow-up? to ensure that similar things are, are, are stopped. But again, the people who have the job, they know where these things are. Everybody has been involved. Like I said, this is a syndicate thing. From government operatives to the operators themselves, because all those things you see down there, there are no things done by just one person. There is a syndicate action for it to happen. And that's what we are saying. I'm not surprised with what I'm seeing, and there, there are still, there, there's still going to be more coming out. But the price is right. Now that the price is right, let's let's open it. That's what has happened. So I'm just appealing that, for the sake of unborn generation, Nigerians should rethink. We should rethink because this is a disgrace to this country. We might be healing and everything now. It shows 
how dirty our system is and we as a, as, as a people. This type of thing should not ever happen. But I'm saying it way back in three, you say nine years ago. Who comes up with nine years? Who? Who is saying nine years? Let that right. person come out. <laughs> All right. Well, so, so you, you have described this uh, oil theft as a syndicate. Now, from your experience, uh, you know, as an oil and gas industry stakeholder, what would you say has protected this type of racket or syndicate, as you have described it, for so long? And um, you've talked about your experience in 1983, um, you know, flying down the, the helicopter. Now, was that particular incident reported at the time? For me to appear on television, you know why I did. Because if refineries say they need 300,000 barrels to be pumped to them from air scrubbers, the processes, you can easily find out something is wrong. So as an engineer coming from the US 79, went in there, worked, 83, I was like engineering supervisor or whatever. And uh, I started wondering, when you pump 300,000 barrels to the refinery in Worry, they will report back and tell you, we got 300,000 barrels. That doesn't make sense to me as a petroleum engineer, because there are losses in the line due to friction and all other forces. So I can't give you 300,000 barrels and you say you get 300,000 barrels. That gave me some concern and every engineer or whoever is involved in just moving crude or liquid knows that is not right so that now gave me food for thought the next thing is just, okay when they lay that line from escravos to the refinery x years what was the pressure they were pumping from escravos and what is the pressure at the refinery the difference is the delta p so if that starts increasing, what does that mean? There are leakages. So, and for that to happen, the people at both ends, we have to inform these guys, look, we are pumping open. Because those pipings you're seeing, there's a valve somewhere. So once they start pumping, they are aware, they open their valve and they start discharging into the big badges. So with that, when they finish pumping, they will close the valve. They fill those tanks, drag it outside. So what I'm saying is this is a clear syndicate. Every person in the line is guilty. And to say it was not, I, I just did my job by doing basic engineering and say, hey, something is happening here. And nobody cared. I have to until years later in panel discussions on tv discussions i've said this thing over and over ago several tv stations we know this that have discussed this thing so even with that in a sensitive environment people should start asking what do we do how do we get about these are very easy things to find but it's just of the syndicate and the money involved it's money game if the if the navy sees them, they turn a blind eyes. They are getting their money. If you see the 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 other the police people see these things, go around the Niger Delta, even in all these small small villages around. There are police vehicles going around to the different different points to collect money. Military vehicles are going around to different different points to collect money. We see them every day. I'm here in the Niger Delta right now. I've moved back. And I see these things. At night, you see vehicles carrying diesel or engine oil or crude in plastics. The, the police, they are aware. They are everybody, they are aware. And these boys give them money, they go. So let us not deceive ourselves. Everybody know what is happening. But the price is right. Like I said, if somebody come up and say, this is what I found, you have given the analysis. The guy had the job way back. Why is it not reported? So it's, it's the syndicate game. Let us not deceive ourselves. Nigerians should be ashamed that they spend their money 
to send people to school, to do all kinds of things, only to sit down and observe fraud going on without recourse. We handicapped. It is a shame that this is happening in this country. But it's not new and it's not strange to me because I've seen it all way, way back. And even this year, I've appeared on TV to say the same thing. Nobody's going to claim ignorance, whether the oil companies or the, the, the NNPC people. Nobody can claim. Everybody. It's a syndicate thing. So somebody right. mentioned how do people come into the country without clearance? Look at the look at the distance to lay a four kilometer pipeline. So nobody saw all the days you're working there, the helicopters going to those flow station, they didn't see anything. Come on, man. Mm. You know. Uh, so uh, all right. Th thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nain. Um it's a money game and it's a syndicate game. Collusion yeah. here That's and it. there. Uh, but I would like you to, yes, I would like you to, to comment further on the international dimension to this theft. Uh, as you are aware, in August, just this last August, uh, the Nigerian Navy uh, with their Equatorial Guinean counterpart, you know, intercepted and arrested uh, a Norwegian uh, super tanker uh, vessel. Uh, the story was that it had taken some oil, but the Nigerian Navy came back later to say that, yes, it might be a three uh, million capacity super tanker vessel, but it, it didn't succeed in getting anything out of Nigeria, but they pursued it to Equatorial Guinea and then arrested it. Um, that alone shows the international dimension to all this. But then we are in October. We have not heard anything about what has happened to that Norwegian uh, uh, vessel. And if you recall us at that time, uh, the identities of the uh, individuals in it were 16 Indians, eight Sri Lankan, one Pole, and a Filipino found inside it. Are they still under custody? Is the Nigerian government taking this up? I mean, this says a lot about the fact that it's not ghosts that are taking, you know, stealing our crude and selling it at the international market. President Muhammadu Buhari is the Minister for Petroleum. The question that a lot of people will be asking is, what is going on? Is the Nigerian state not capable of dealing with the international dimension of this oil theft that has refused to cease? What will be your thoughts on those, sir? Well, as far as I'm concerned, like I said, this is a big money game. There's no doubt about it. Now, let me take you back. I have a junior of mine in secondary school, Ray Admiral Popogri. He was in worry here as a commander. That time, I was in Escrobos. Now, this guy goes out to do his job. You can see tankers being bombed offshore and all that, or badges. What was the name given to him? Who no man, I the kill man. Because he refused to compromise good. After a while, transferred, it became red. He came back and said, the guy was doing bunk because he tried to stop that mess. And his top guys saw it as not what he should do. He was transferred from worry. War college came back at the end of the day. Those are the type of credible officers you need that will bite the bullet. But they are very few, and in most cases, they will take you down. I, as, as a person in the industry, I've always stood my ground. One, I work for Chevron. But before I work for Chevron, I'm a Nigerian. So my patriotism goes to Nigeria first, then my company second. Most Nigerians take their patriotism in the reverse order. No American will trade America for any company. That's what we must think about. Now you talk about the tanker offshore. How are the arms and ammunition coming into this country? Ukraine, all these places, they want the oil. And communication is easy. So 
bring your tanker, we'll give you crude, this is what we want and all that. Look at the type of sophisticated arms and ammunition you see all over the place. Where are they coming from? That's why I say it's a big time business. But listen, it is a rat in the house that tells the rat outside <laughs> there's food inside. So we, all those Filipinos and all these, they wouldn't have had access to come here and collect food, except for Nigerians themselves who make the connection available. Like I said, those guys have a job. And the international world, everybody wants to make money. Like I keep telling people, the oil companies, they are not here because they like your face. They are here as businessmen. Anything that will stop their operation, if there's a way to take care of it, let's take care of business and move. By the same token, those people coming from outside to buy your, to take, carry your crude at zero price and all this, they just want the, the crude. How much are they selling to these guys? Is it international price? No. You're selling crude for 100, 100 barrels a day. They might be selling to them for $50 a barrel. If you get $50 per barrel, as opposed to $100 per barrel, hell, I will go out there and get it for 50 That's why whatever is. Meanwhile, the course is clear because all facilities people who are supposed to guide this, they've all been set to. That is purely the situation. Now, going back, how many Nigerians they found guilty of stealing money in this country that you've heard that is jailed or something done? It's business as usual. So you catch those people, 3 million barrels in a tanker, all the people arrested. With time, it will go away. Who has been arrested? This person stole so money from oil. This is what has happened? Nothing. We just have to go out of our way to change our philosophy as a country. And we, we just have to do it. If not for us, for generations on born. So what you are saying, all the questions you are asking, the answers are clear. Mm. It's money game. You right. catch the tanker, there are people inside, there are people who are into the business, they will rescue them and even fly them back to their country. That tanker will end up somewhere, the oil in it will be sold, somebody make more money out of it. So that is the dirty game going on. We just have to purge ourselves as Nigerians. We are in a mess. Right. because of indiscipline and greed. So that's the problem. Okay. You've talked about um, Nigerians uh, changing our philosophy. Now, we've heard some people argue that appointments by government in the oil sector is skewed in favor of a particular section of the country. And as such, the perpetrators not only justify their actions, um, but equally receive commendations from stakeholder communities. Now, could this also be a contributing factor or a very strong reason for the upsurge uh, in sabotage of the pipelines? Yeah. You see, the, 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 the employment within the uh, NNPC or whatever, or positions and all that, is just a game. When I was to be appointed 2007 as a group MD, the whole place was shaking because it would have been a drastic action that would have put this country on a straight line. Because I will not tolerate this nonsense going on. At the end of the day, one uh, year ago, I was appointed. No problem. But the oil industry is not a place where you sell gari and rice. There are people trained specifically. There are people who have the skill to do the job. And they are there. I know of Nigerians who have the capability. When you start featuring 2011 for a first 11 game, this is what you get. This is exactly what you get. And what we are seeing is a result of the rot. Every other organization and ministry in this country, you can pick anybody. But for the oil industry, for God's sake, pick people who have knowledge. You pick people to the board. You pick people to do the job. You know, you, you don't, you, it's not a game for incompetence. And the results we are seeing is because of cumulative incompetence. That's why we are where we are. You know, things like this can happen. If you pump in, somebody knows 
this thing is not right and somebody follows it up and you've got to have the knowledge you don't give what you don't have if you want someone to give what he doesn't have you're making a joke of it and that's what has happened to the oil industry we have to go back to the drawing board and say within the oil industry nnpc ministry of petroleum resources we are going to take the best hands we have in this country to do our job whether it's in the board or on the job or whatever that way we have a perfect this is not history it's not going to do history this is real technical job and it's not meant for every dick and harry people have to be trained people have the competencies you assign them to places they will be responsible this 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 is very it's a big shame and it makes a lot of us feel really bad that we came out of this country with the government money scholarship whatever so you have a responsibility excluding all that but nobody has shown i can mention so many oil men in this country that have sound integrity sound knowledge you will not see them appear in NNPC or appear in government offices as minister or anything it is always business as usual you got to know somebody who knows somebody how will that happen Nobody wants to get into that mess. Is it not uh, banga and starch we eat in Delta here? Till I die, I can afford it. So why would I go and be lobbying people, other people too, who are sound, even better than me? They are all in the industry. They are around. But nobody goes for them because their people want to maintain their integrity. They will not do the dirty job. That's why you can't get them. And that, that is why the government too don't want such people. Because what is going on is what Okay. Everybody. So that's it. All right, all right, all right, Mr. Day. Before we let you go, just one more question, a quick one from me. Uh, the situation is really truly dire. Uh, Seven hundred thousand dollars monthly uh, is the value of what an MPC says that we are losing on a daily, on a monthly basis. Uh, we can't even meet our OPEC quota. What is your faith in the Tompolo led? Uh, surveillance uh, arrangement for that region. We have seen what he has discovered last week. Do you think that going forward till the end of this administration, there could be at least a semblance of uh, a bit of sanity and saving a bit of money since Nigerian government is giving him billions of Naira to look after what our military apparatus has failed you know, to secure? Do you have any faith in the Tompolo-led thing? I've, I've discussed this thing before that First and foremost, you even said it. The guy is a wanted person. You know, I've said it over and over. The government is not being real. Because the Niger Delta, you have young, intelligent people. I'm from the Niger Delta. How can a government be rewarding violence? When you reward violence, you promote violence. If I have to be a gun carrier and I'm very firm, I can do it. The young people are looking at why do I have to go to school? You go to university, you graduate, you go and do NYC, you get 18,700 naira a month. If I go and show a then gone, I'm an ex military, I guess it's 5,000 naira. So why do I have to go to school? So the whole program is just to us making the youths here militant uh, people oriented towards violence. We have to move for a way out. First and foremost, we should make people realize we can live without being a vandal or a violent person. The message the government is sending in that direction is not too good. But all the same, Tompolo is from the creek area. I'm used to all those creeks too. So he knows where things are. So they are picking a man who has been in the trench. He knows all the deals. Even the people who are doing this thing, I won't be surprised, he knows all of them. Because he's hobnobbing. So he decides he's going to, since he's given this money, let me do it for once. So I, I can't blame him, but I think the government should look further to start doing things right, get the right people to do the right job. You have retired uh, Navy people, Army people, well-established security well-trained people but the price has to be right because all these things contracts they give in this country the price has to be right so 
what he's doing is the usual business. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the program this morning.